Hello, good evening. Good Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Araceli. How are you? I thank you. How are you doing fine? I'm fine, thanks, God. Thanks, God. Well, okay, guys, welcome to you all. Thank you so much for always being on time because most of the time you always, you are always the same sometimes. So I'm so happy for you because that means that you are interested on this course. So I just wanna say thank you for that, okay? For connecting on time. So um, I hope everyone of you, of you is okay. And I hope you have had a really nice day, okay? So we are about to start today. We already have uh, 11, well, 12. Everybody's getting connected by the moment. So let's see. Okay, guys, for today we have, uh, but first of all, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we do. Okay, perfect. Yes, I do, sir. Perfect, so we're going to start with this class today. And uh, because we're following a program, today we have uh, something that is kind of interesting. Let's say it like that. It's um, something that we use in daily basis as well. Some of you must probably know, or some of you should probably know a little bit about this topic. So we will find out what we have for today. So um, welcome to the ones that just connected and we are going to start for today. So for today's class, we have, uh, let me see, let me share the document. But first of all, have you ever heard about model bears before? Yes, sir. I I know I have not on out the moral moral auxiliaries. That mm -hmm. is the name. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So today we have the model verbs. Cool. And that's what we are going to see for today. So see. All right. So for today we have the model verbs. As Araceli, Sandra Araceli said, she knows a little bit about it, these verbs. Um, so we will try to see as much information as we can to try to understand all of them, okay? So we will go a step by step. As you may know, I, I, I always love giving you, first of all, the meaning of that, because without a meaning, you won't be able to understand or at least to have an idea about what we're going to talk about. And today we're going to know what are model verbs. So as the meaning there says, model verbs express modality, ability, possibility, necessity, probability, obligation and other conditions. Yes, that's it. So all of the ones that we're going to see today, they can be expressed in modality, some of them necessity, some of them obligations, and we are going to know step by step each one of them, okay? 
So let me show you some examples that this is gonna be in general for you to understand the main topic that we're going to talk about. We have three examples over there. The first one, it says, I can cook Italian recipes. I can cook Italian recipes. As you can see there, the model verb we have, it is can. Yeah. Later on, we will see how this model verb works or how this model verb acts. Is giving me obligation, is giving me possibility, is giving me a necessity, or is giving me a condition. Later on, we will find out, okay? But for this moment, right now, this is just general information to introduce the model verbs. So, in the second one, we have, uh, you could, you could use my pen. You could use my pen. And a third one, I would, I would like a cup of coffee, please. I would like a cup of coffee. It's very important that since the beginning, you know the right pronunciation of these words because most of the time we know the meaning of those words, but we don't know the right pronunciation of them. But we will learn it step by step today. So this is just general information for you to understand what are we going to talk about or what is going to be the topic for today. And we are going to talk about the model verbs we use in the English language. So to continue with this, something that I want you to remember. You always have to remember that Model verbs, they act as complementary verbs. And model verbs, they never work without another verb. Why? Let's see these examples I have over here. What happened if I, for example, um, if I want to use a model verb. Let's say it in, in, the, in the example number uh, two. You could use my pen. Here it says models do not work without a verb. Would it make sense for you if I said you could my pen? Not right. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because I'm not using the verb. So that's why we have this information over here that you always have to remember that model verbs, they never work without another verb. Yes, so following this same example, I won't, it won't be grammatically correct if I say you could my pen, if I use the example number two. It doesn't make sense because if you said you could use my pen, I am missing the verb use. So it won't make sense. That's the first rule that I want you to remember. The second one that is also very important. And uh, model verbs, we, not, we do not conjugate them. They stay the same way. They will never be able to be conjugated and they have no tenses. There's no tenses for them. So the way you see it, it is the same way they will be in a sentence. They will never change, they will never be conjugated, okay? So let's continue with this. How am I supposed to create a positive sentence with the, with the models? Here we, we're going to learn how to do it. First of all, we have to follow a, a structure. This structure that you can see over here, it is the one that you have to follow in order to create positive sentences. So first of all, you have the subject that will be 
personal pronouns, right? Are you with they, he, she, it, right? That's the subject. What's the second one? The model verb. So we can use should, can, would, and so on. Then we have to add a verb. We have an examples over there, go and it. And after that, we have to add a complement. And there we have completed this structure. You see, subject, model verb, verb, and complement. So if we create a sentence, how would it be then? There we have them. You see, you should go to the museum. You should go to the museum. She can eat pizza. She can eat pizza. So let's see if you are paying attention. Let me see. What did I say about the models? Do we conjugate them or do we not conjugate them? We do not conjugate them. Great. So I need you to remember this, that you can see those red, those letters that are in red. We do not, we will never ever modify the verb in the third person. Normally, normally in the present perfect, we know that when we are talking about the third person, we need to modify the verb. Sometimes we will, uh, we will add a letter S, sometimes we will add a letter ES when we are talking about the third person. But what happened with the models? We will never ever modify the verb, even though we are talking about the third person. Yes? Yes. So yes. I think that you are clear what the third person is, he, she, and it, right? So as you know, in the simple present, we need to modify the verb in order to make sense and to make it grammatically correct. But when we are using a model verb, we will never ever, keep that in mind, please. We will never ever modify the verb in the third person. As you can see here in the example, it says, she can eat pizza. What would it happen if I don't have the model verb can? ¿Qué pasaría si no le pongo el model verb can? How would it be the sentence? ¿Cómo estaría la? The sentence. She eats pizza. She eats, eats pizza. Correct. If we don't have the model verb, if we don't use a model, we have to modify the verb. So it will be, tendríamos que agregarle a letter S, right? And it will be, she eats, she eats pizza. But because we are using a model verb, we cannot modify the verb. Understood? Yes, I understand. Perfect. So let's continue with this. How are we going to create a negative sentence? Let's find out. We will also need to follow a, a structure. Yeah, let me show you which one. Here we have it. This is a structure that you need to follow in order to create negative sentences. So let's see, we have once again subjects. I do with they, he, she, it, right? Model verbs. We are using these two just an, as examples. Should and can. Then the structure says that we have to add the, the word not. So we have to add the word not. And then the main verb, go and eat. And at the end, the complement to the museum and pizza. So how would you create a sentence? Here you have, yes? You should not or you shouldn't go to the museum. You shouldn't go to the museum. 
you can say she can't eat pizza she can't eat pizza or she cannot eat pizza yes the difference between the positive and the negatives i think that is clear you only have to add the word not before i'm sorry after the model verb and before the main verb No questions at the moment? Everything's clear, teacher. Thank you. Me, teacher, I have a question. Go ahead, uh, Reinaldo. What is the pronunciation or the different pronunciation in can, can not in, in the form contact? Okay, perfect. Uh, most of the time, or when you are um, watching a movie or something like that, it would depend of the area. Because as we know, United States is not the only one, it's not the only country where people speak or where people speak English, right? So there's England, there's Australian, there's a lot of different accents. Most of the time in American English, they say can't with the letter T, like little sound of the letter T at the end, like can't, can't. But you could probably hear, you could probably hear this same word, but in British English, that will be like can't, can't. But that will be British English. Keep that in mind because we have a variety of accents. But for you, because in this course, we are learning American accent. So we are going to say can't, 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 okay? And for that's for the abbreviation, yes? Can't. And if you want to say it completed, you are going to say cannot, cannot. Can't and cannot. Mm -hmm. Is it clear, Reynaldo? Yes, teacher. Okay, Thank any you. other questions you, that you may have at this moment? Someone else or we can continue with the class? Let's continue. Okay. Yeah, we can continue. Perfect. So uh, once again, I just, this, the letters, oh, Candida Reyes, I see that you raised your hand. Go ahead. Este, eh, excuse me, teacher. Mm -hmm. eh, repeat, please, the structure of sentence negative, please. Perfect, perfect. Let's let's go back step by step, okay? So here we have it. Here we have it. Yes. First of all, we need to have subject that the subject can be all the personal pronouns we know. I, we, they, he, she. Then we have to add the modal verb. In this case, I am using should and can. After that, you need to add the word not. Yes, not make a negative. After that, the main verb, and last one, the complement. And this, it will be like this example. So when we use the structure, it will give us an example like this. You should not go to the museum or the abbreviation, you shouldn't go to the museum. The second one, she can't eat pizza or she cannot eat pizza, okay? Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. So once again, I just want you to remember that we are not going to modify the verb on the third person. I am repeating this because most of the time we tend we tend to forget things and that's normal. 
We are humans and sometimes we can forget some things, okay? But please, I'm just telling you and repeating the same information for you to keep that in mind, okay? On the third person, we never modify the main verb. So, how or what am I going to do to create a question? We have two ways to do it, two forms. We will try, uh, we will find out the first one. This is the first one. Yes, here we have it. We can use a WH question that you know some of the WH questions, right? We have some examples over there. Where, who, why, when, what. There's more than that ones. There's more than that ones. But I just want to give you like general information so you can understand. Following, if you follow the structure that we have over there, it will be easier for you to create a, a question. So the structure says, first of all, the WA question, then the model verb, then the subject, then the verb, and obviously the question mark, right? Without the question mark, it won't be a sentence. So how or what it will be the result? We will have something like this. That will be the result. The result of following this structure will be these two sentences, these two questions, I'm sorry, that we have here. So where should we go? Where should we go? What can I can do it? What can do it? This is the first form to create questions. Yes, remember W8 question, model verb, subject, verb, and question mark. That will be yes, no questions at this moment. No. no. Okay, perfect. This is the second form of creating questions. It's all pretty much the same thing. It is just a little part that changes. As you can notice here, we are not using anymore the WH questions. Here, at the beginning, we are only using a model verb, a model verb that it will be should and can, then it will be the subject, then it will be the verb, and last one, it will be the complement. So what would be the result of following this structure. It will be the next one. Oh, and obviously the question mark, right? This will be the result. This is going to be the result and it will be, should we go to the museum? Should we go to the museum? Or next one, can you eat pizza? Can you eat pizza? Remember, it's very important to make the intonation of a question because sometimes when we are speaking in Spanish, we don't make the, the intonation that well. In Spanish, we don't do it. But in English, it's very important to make the intonation of a question, yes? Should we go to the museum? Should we go to the museum? Can you hear to the intonation of the question? So can you eat pizza? Can you eat pizza? So keep that in mind. Questions at the moment? Everything is clear, teacher. 
Perfect. So here we have it. Those are the model verbs we have in the English language. Those are the ones. As you can see, we have a list over there and they are 10. That's the total. We have in the English language, we have 10 model verbs. The first one, can. Second one, could. Third one, may. Fourth one, might. Fifth one, will. This will, I know that you probably know. We use it in the future, so you might know it. We have would, would, shall, should, must, and ought to, ought to, ought to. I will repeat it one more time. Can, could, may, might, will, would, shall, should, must, ought to, ought to. Yes? Perfect. Those are the 10 models that we have in the English language. We will go one by one to try to see how do they work or what can we learn from them. We will start with the first one, the model verb can. Here we have it. The model verb can means to be able to, and this indicates ability or possibility. Yes? So here we have some examples. I can't swim. I can't swim. Can you drive? Can you drive? I can speak English. I can speak English. Can you help me? Can you help me? So, as you can see here, this model verb can indicates that you have the ability or that you are able to do something. For example, let's see. In the example number three, we have, I can speak English. What do you think that the model verb is giving you there? Is giving you an ability? Is giving you a possibility? Or is telling you that you are able to do something? What do you think? An ability. An ability, correct, is telling you that you are, that you have the ability of speaking English, right? Or it could be that you are able to get es capaz de speak English. Yes? Yes. Okay, no questions with the model verb can? No. Okay, let's go with the next one. The model verb could, could, listen to the pronunciation, could. Could. Could, we made a, 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 a little sound of the phonetic could. sound of the letter D that it will be like D, D. So we say it at the end, could, 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 could. 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 okay? So the model verb could, means or it is the past tense of the model verb can. This could, it is the past form of the model verb can and indicates also ability or possibility, but obviously in the past. Why? Because it is the past form of the model verb can. So, we have the three examples over there. It says, Joe could speak when he was young. Oh, it's missing something there. 
a verb. Yeah, no, it is ah, in okay, the word. One is. The, the word, is the word. Could speak a language or something like that. Like that. It's missing the word English there. Joe could speak English when he was young. Stephanie, Roxana, I heard you said the letter S. Do you remember no, I... the rule? Yes, it was a mistake. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so remember the rule. We do not modify the verbs, okay? Yes. So, we say in the first example, Stephanie could speak, I'm sorry, Joe, I'm sorry. Joe could speak <laughs> English when he was young. So, the model verb could, it's telling you that he could. El podía, Joe podía hablar inglés Cuando era joven. Yes. It is the past form of the model verb can. So let's see the next one. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep last night. No podía dormir anoche, vea. No podía dormir anoche. Yes. So, could you play an instrument when you were a child? ¿Podías tocar un instrumento cuando eras pequeño? Yes. As you can see here in this case, this could... Okay, let me see if you're paying attention. Joaquin, in the first one, is it giving you ability or possibility? Ability. Ability. And the third one, Stephanie Roxana, is it giving you a possibility or an ability? An ability. An ability. Why? An uh, possibility. Yeah. It is a, a possibility you were... because you are asking someone you were... and you don't know I... yet I... if that person was able to, to play the instrument. So you are trying to get a possibility of that, okay? Okay. Questions with the model verb could? No? There is no question, guys? Would you please borrow me your pencil? Who said that? Tell me your name. Carla. Carla, okay. Can you Can please you repeat? be so kind to borrow me your, your pencil? I don't know if it is correct to say to borrow me. Yes, and borrow. we are going there. We are going there. Let me tell you that could, could also means possibility in the future. What does that mean? It means that no puede significar solo podía in the past, but it can also give you a possibility in the future. What does that mean? So, podrías, podrías. It will have that meaning as well. Podía in the past, because most of the time it is used to refer to the past, but it can also give you a possibility in the future. And thank you so much for the for the example you just gave me, can you repeat the example one more time so we can listen to that, please? Of course. Could you please be so kind? Sorry, could you please be so kind to borrow me your pencil? Could you please? In that case, are you let me see, Sandra Raceli, in that case, in the, in the question she said, is she using the model verb could for to refer to the past or she is using it to refer to a possibility in the future? Could you please, is, is um, a pol in a polite way to ask something uh, for, to be to to be done in the future so that that will means that in this case 
she is using the model verb could to mean yeah. possibility yeah, in the future. In the future. It yeah. will be a possibility in the future. So keep that in mind. The model verb yeah. could, it is the past tense of can, but it can also means a possibility for the future. Um, it seems mm. similar to, to might? No, it's no. Kind, kind of giving you a possibility as well, but there's always like a little difference. Okay. okay. So questions so far with the model verb could or everything is clear so we can go to the next one. And um, teacher, I can see over there says, could you open the door, please? Could you open the door, please? But uh, in that case, we can use also, can you open the door, please? What? Yes. Can you open the door? It is like, like kind of mandatory. Like, let's go back to this. Can you see here? Okay. Indicate yes, something. Yes. But here, let's say that could, it is the, like the polite way to oh, say okay. something. Sure. So now that you tell me that, Araceli, mm -hmm. in that sentence or in that question, I'm sorry, that you see on the image, Mm -hmm. Are you, are they using the past form of could, of can, I'm sorry, or are they using a possibility for the future? Mm, the past tense of, of can is, it, but, but it, it is, a, um, let me see. It, he is asking to open the door, but uh, in a polite way. Okay, let me see. Uh, Katya, what do you think? Is it using the possibility for the future or is it using it to talk about the past? It's a possibility in the future. Why? Why do you think it, it will be like that? Because the man is asking um, if uh, a car can Podría, like that. Yes, it's like that. So, thank you so much for that. So, as you do not get confused on the on the past, it's really easy to notice. Try to try to see that in your mind, okay? And that question, he is saying, "Could you open the door, please? Could you open the door?" So he's asking to the secretary that you can see on the image. Podrías abrirme la puerta, por favor? So oh, yes. he's asking for a possibility in the future. In mm -hmm. the future. All right. Thank you. Perfect. So sure. questions? So, yes? Uh, I have a question, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, could you give us a uh, um, pronunciation to this word? Cool, cool. Okay, let me let me show you how, how it is. Could, could, could make could. a little sound of the phonetic sound of the letter D, el sonido fonético de la le letra D, it will be like D, D. So make that sound, but little, like could, could, could. Good. Good. Okay. But for for the negative form, it will be couldn't. 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 So couldn't. could and couldn't. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other question that you might have? If there's no questions, we will go to the next one, okay? So here we have the next model verb. We have may. May as, como el mes, vea, like the month, yes? May. This model verb, it is used to indicate also a possibility in the future. So, 
but do not get confused on could and may. Why? Because the main one, el, el que se usa generalmente para posibilidad in the future, is may. Could puede ser usado para posibilidad, pero generally it's only used for the past tense. So do not get confused on that. So remember, the model verb may, it's the one or the main one that we use to talk or to indicate possibility in the future. The model verb could, we can use it, but most of the time it is used for the past tense. So do not get confused on that. So we have some examples over here. Number one, she may pass the test. Ella podría pasar el examen, ¿verdad? Podría, we're giving a possibility for the future. We don't know if she is gonna pass it. We don't know yet. That's why we are, we are using the model verb may to give a possibility so she can pass it or not pass it. We don't know yet. That's why we're using it. She may pass the test. Or number two, she may not, it may not snow tomorrow. Podría no nevar mañana. Podría no nevar mañana. Yes, it may not snow tomorrow. In this case, we don't have an abbreviation. No tenemos una, una abreviación para hacerlo negativo. We only add the letter, the word not, so automatically make it negative. So we say, it may not snow tomorrow. And to create a question, we can say, may I come in? May I come in? Que es la que general se utiliza para decir, puedo entrar o podría entrar? Like asking for permission to someone. Pidiéndole a alguien querer entrar como permiso, pero aún sin tener la aprobación. ¿Sí? Es una posibilidad. A possibility that, per, that the person in the house can tell you not, you cannot come in, or he can tell you yes, you can. Questions about the model Bermay? No. Hello. Hello, teacher. Um, it is used to indicate a possibility in the future, but with permission, right? Yeah, like permission, like, like the example number three we have there. If I go to your house, for example, and I'm at the front door, and I, and I ask you, may I come in? Podría entrar, may I come in? I don't know yet if you will say yes or you will say no. I'm still thinking that it will be a possibility for me or for you in this case to tell me, yes, come in or no. So that's why we use it as a possibility, but indeed, it will be like permission. Let's say it like that. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, nope. an example. Uh, teacher. Okay. Uh, uh, teacher. Yes, go. Uh, another example is, may I help you? May I help you? Remember, when you use this model, you're asking for a possibility. You don't know if the person will tell you yes or no, but it's a really good example. May I help you? You still don't know if that person will say yes. Help me, please. That's why you can use it. But very good, okay. Reynald. Maybe you can also okay. say, may I ask you something? May I ask you something? It is... And we go to the same, verdad? 
es possibility, pero como between that, we could use it as permission, like asking for permission. Yes? Like in the polite way. So questions so far? If there's no questions with this one, I will go to the next one. No questions on this one? It is clear, teacher. Okay. Let's see. So, and here it comes something a little bit complicated because you could probably get confused between say using may or might. Why? Because as the meaning says, the model verb might, it is a synonym of may. So they both means the same, but this one, the difference between may and might, that in this one, even if they means the same, we can also use might to talk about a possibility in the present or in the future. The difference between they both is that may we use it only for possibility in the future, but might we can use it also for possibility in the future, but we will also use it for possibility in the present. That's the difference between they both. But they means the same. They both means the same. So we have three examples over there. My sister might come home for my birthday. My sister might come for might come home for my birthday. So in that case, we can use this sentence to talk about possibility in the present or in the future. Let's see. If we use the first sentence to try to say a possibility in the present, it will be something like, mi hermana puede venir a la casa para mi cumpleaños. Puede, because I'm using that as a possibility in the present. But what if I want to use it to a possibility in the future? It will be something like, mi hermana podría venir a casa por mi cumpleaños. Do you get me the idea? Yes? Perfect. So in this one, we do not have an abbreviation to make it negative. We do not have that. What do we do to make it negative? We only add the word not um, before might and it will make it negative automatically. So we say, you might not arrive on time. <laughs> you might not arrive on time. Yes? And the last one. Let me see, I, I'm going to choose someone. Loida Pineda. Can you help me reading the third one, please? It might be better to finish this now rather than wait until tomorrow. Thank you so much. So let me ask someone else. Um, Eunice Ramirez. Yes, sir. Hello. So in this case, can I use uh, the model verb might to talk about possibility in the present or am I talking in this one a possibility for the future or can I use it in both ways? What do you think? I think in the present. In the present. Okay. What do you think, Diana Jamilet? Can I use it for both or can I use it just for the present or the future? Um, I use the future. The future, okay. Are you, uh, do you agree, uh, Stephanie, Roxana? 
Do you agree with uh, what Diana Jamilet said? Yes, but we have to change the, the sentence. The meaning of the sentence, right? Yes. Correct. So do not forget that in all the cases, we can use it, it as a possibility in the present or a possibility in the future. What does that mean? For example, on the number three, if I want to use that sentence as a possibility on the present, that will be something like, puede ser mejor terminar esto ahora que esperar hasta mañana. What if I want to use that as a possibility for the future? It will be something like, podría ser mejor terminar esto ahora que esperar hasta mañana. Can you notice the difference? Yes? So, is it clear this one? Is it clear? Can also... All right, so if it is clear, let me tell you that might can also be used like may, because as you can see there in the meaning, it says that it is a synonym of may to, may, to ask for permission. But if you use it as may, or if you want to use it as may, that is commonly used only in the British language. Mm. Most of Americans do, do not use it the same way as may, because that is not commonly used on American English but it's good if you know it, okay? Most of the time you can see or you are going to see those examples of might used as may, but only on the British English. Okay, uh, teacher. Yes? Um, it might be better to finish this now. Uh, we can say also uh, it, um, with with better finish this now. Can you repeat that again? Uh, with better finish this now. Más nos vale terminar esto ahora. With better finish it. I, I don't get what you what you mean. Are you uh, using um, a model or something? Um. Wow. Well, when we want to say, más te vale tal cosa, you'd better finish your homework. Oh, in that case, <laughs> it, you are using a model. Yes, you are using it, but you are not using the model might. That will be uh, the model would, or uh, in another case, it will be should. One of uh, those two. Okay, but yes, it's correct to say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But at, the, at this point, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. So, so is it clear the model bear might? Yes, it is. If it is clear and if there is no question, we are going to go to the next one. And we have the model verb shall. Listen to that, shall. 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 So the meaning of this model verb shall, we commonly use it. Um, let me see. Loida, you ask what does the word rather means? Yes? So let me go back to these examples. Do you remember what we saw about the conjunctions? Is it, is it yeah. rather a conjunction? I don't know. Maybe a, a connect word? No. What is a, let me, let me ask someone. Eunice, 
Do you remember what a conjunction does? ¿Qué es lo que hace una conjunction en una oración? You need two ideas like the dependent clause and dependent clause. Okay. A conjunction is something that connects two ideas. In this case, rather, rather than those two words are a conjunction. Son una conjunction. En este caso, rather significa en vez de, en vez de, rather than, la oración sería, podría ser mejor, o, o podría ser mejor terminar esto ahora, en vez de, rather than, en vez de, esperar hasta mañana. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, let's continue with this model verb, shall. As I was saying, this model verb, shall, it is used the same way as like, as will, I'm sorry, will, to express the future. In this one, I want you to, to do not, I don't want you to get confused on this. Tiene el mismo uso del will. Ya sabemos que el will, we use it to talk about the future, right? Yes, okay. So the model verb child, it is the same thing as will. Entonces, you could say, entonces, ¿para qué, para qué tengo el will? Or, ¿por qué tengo que utilizar shall? So, let me tell you or let me explain you something. Shall, it was commonly used in the ancient language. En el lenguaje viejo en inglés, vea. Shall, before it was used to talk about the future. Yes, but nowadays, hoy en día, we use the Model verb will. Usamos will to refer about a future. But in the past, in the past in the English language, most people used to use, solían usar, shall to refer about the future. But nowadays we have the will, okay? So, do not get confused on that. Even if they have the same, um, they are used for the same purpose. Nowadays, you can still see uh, this model verb shall. You, if you read a book in English, you could probably see it. Yes, because some books are old versions or literature. Yes, if you're reading a book on literature, you will you will probably see the model verb shall. Yes, but because nowadays is not that common to use it, but they have the same um, the same use as will. So, let's see some examples. I shall be at your wedding. What? Uh, will that means, uh, let me see, let me ask someone. Basilia Monterrosa, hello. Hello. Uh, how would you translate this one? I shall be at your wedding. If you now know that shall means the same as will. Eh, yo debería... At, I don't know what the meaning. En. Ah, yo podría ir a tu boda. Okay. Podría estar en tu boda. <clears throat> okay, thank you for, for your answer. Let me ask someone else. Uh, Christy, Christy Muñoz, are you there? <laughs> okay, so... What do you understand if I say, I, I shall be at your wedding? Do you agree with what Basilia said? 
Yes, it could be. I have an option to. Or someone request to you to be at, at that wedding. Okay, let me see someone else. Uh, Claudia Rivas. Hello. Uh, do you agree I, with with what the other girls said, or do you have a different opinion? Um, Pay attention to the meaning. Uh, you can see there that it says the model verb shall is used like will to express future. So if I say, I shall be at your wedding, what would it mean for you? I go. I go. Eh, solo voy a decir en español porque en inglés no. Go ahead. No cuesta. <laughs> Como, por ejemplo, podría. Bye. Podría. Mm -hmm. Ir a tu. A tu boda o tu cumpleaños, no sé. Ok. Thank you. Bye. Please, do not get confused, everybody. Do not get confused. Todas las respuestas que me han dado, none of them is correct. Ninguna estuvo buena. Estaré. Mi teacher. Es, who said me? Estaré en tu boda. O yo estaré en tu boda. Exactly. Why? Porque arriba estaba, ¿verdad? Les decía, pay attention to the meaning. Recuérdese que el will es para futuro. Si yo hago en futuro, yo, diré, yo diría no estaría. Yo diría estaré. Estaré porque es en un futuro. No voy a decir podría. Shall no va a significar podría, debería. No, 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 no. Por eso dice ahí, shall is used like will. To express the future. That's what you have to remember. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Well, some other teachers has told me that uh, shall is at the end that we will be, but with like obligation. And when we say I will be is because I want to to be there because will means volunt volunt volunteer and shall that's, is obligated. It's, that's why it says it's used, es usado, like will to express huh? something in the future. So okay. you said, but at the end, the meaning, it will be the same. Yes, mm -hmm. we can take it the way you say it. If we use shall, we can say that yeah. you have like a minimum obligation to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you use will, you have the desire or you have the option that if you mm -hmm. want to go, but always talking in the future. Yeah. So what I want you to be clear for the other ones that have probably not understood that well, Mm -hmm. shall y will, los dos van a tener the same meaning when we translate it. Ambos van a tener el mismo significado. Because if oh. you notice, Sandra, the yes. ones that give me the, that help me to translate it, they were saying, mm -hmm. deberá, debería, podría. No, no, no. no, no, no. We are going to translate it the same way as if we are using will. That's what yeah. I want you to be clear, okay? Yes, of course. But they say that when we say, I shall be at your wedding, is because it will be true. And when yeah. we say, I will be at your wedding, is yes, but maybe yes, maybe no. They say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Es como, es como que lo Es más formal decir I shall be at your wedding que, que decir I will be at your wedding. That was the, the other teacher told yeah. you. Yeah, let me explain you why. Because this, as I mentioned to you at the beginning, the model verb shall 
it was yeah. used in the ancient language, like the old uh -huh. English. So that's why mm -hmm. it was very polite. Because mm -hmm. back in, yeah. if we go back in the history, you know, people yeah. before they used to speak very, very formal. Yes, so we, we can say that shall, it is the formal version of the English language. Uh -huh. So will, okay. it is like a new version. And that's uh -huh. why we have those two differences. Because oh. shall is not commonly used, not even in presentations, not even in, in if you are speaking with someone. Nowadays, it's very it's like rare, weird if someone use shall. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, people prefers to use will. Yeah. Why? Because shall, it was like the old version. As you said, you are like confirming that you yeah. will stay there or that you will attend to an event. Yeah. And if you yeah. say will, it yeah. means that you will go but you don't know yet, you have like a chance to go or not. It will be like volunteer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. Thank you, teacher. Okay, so any other question that you might have for the, this model verb, Shai? No questions? Okay, guys, it is... Um, it is 9.05 p.m. We didn't fill one hour, right? We didn't fill the time today. So we will stop this here and tomorrow we will continue with the other ones that we are missing. Yes? So um, I will stop sharing this presentation with you. And I also want to remind you, remind you I'm sorry, that please keep on working on the platform. As you saw today, someone from Human Resources text on the group saying that some of you haven't worked on the platform. So please guys, that it is for you to continue on this course. So if you want to continue in this course for the next time, please keep on working on the platform so you will have more chances to, to be with us on the next course, okay? So that's my advice for you. Okay. And I just want to say good night Bye. and thank you so much for being here today, okay? Okay, thank good night. Thank you so much for paying good attention. Night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Take care. Thank Bye. you, goodbye.